I may not have been posting videos of recent makes here on YouTube, but I have been sewing up a couple different pieces with my new patterns that I had purchased a couple weeks ago. I can't wait to show you, stay tuned. I'm about to break it all down. Welcome back to Dining Creativity. I'm Rachel Ann, and I am here to share with you my sewing journey, the highs, the lows, and a little bit of in-between, along with my most recent makes that will be great transitional pieces into the fall. In fact, I know they will because I've already worn several of them. I fell behind schedule in posting. I mentioned this in my community update, but I did recently do some traveling. My husband and I are being relocated across the country with his work. So we are literally moving from the East Coast of the United States all the way to the West Coast. So while I did have a great trip out to California, it was a work trip 100% in terms of finding a place to live, which as you know, watching, if you have been looking for new places to live, it is still an interesting time to try to find a new place to live. But thankfully, all the stars aligned and we were able to get a really cute new home in a great area. And so in the next few months, I will be packing everything up and heading out west. I am very excited. But as you can imagine, it creates a lot of stress. And so I figured I may as well keep this moving and I'll record a video after not recording one for so long. So without further ado, though, you're here to see the new makes. And so let me show you some of those new makes. So I don't wanna belabor this particular item too much because it is a repeat item. I've already shown you some previous makes, but it was the Mimi G bell sleeved dress. I'm gonna throw up some pictures here so you can really see it, but I used this gorgeous material that I had scooped up for 60% off at Joann Fabrics. It, I did end up going with the wrong side of the fabric. And okay, so that was the, I guess what you would say the right side. Something about this wrong side though, I loved it. This is what initially attracted me to this particular fabric and I am so glad I went with it because I think it gives that retro vibe. This is the pattern that really requires no formal introduction if you have been a viewer of this channel, but it is the Nomi Gwen Hang Mimi G pattern and this is 2021. I, again, highly recommend it. Someone had asked if I would do a sew along with this one, and I absolutely will plan on doing that. I wanted to sew up this particular garment for my trip to wear out to dinner, uh, so I, I, I just, I, I couldn't do the sew along this time, but it's on my list. I think that is such a great idea. Zip back, very easy little number just to throw together and, and call it a day. This is the first time that I actually sewed up the bell sleeves. I think they're super fun. I think that they add that retro flair that I love so much when it comes to garments in the here and now. But this was the final look and I'm very happy with it. Again, know me, Gwen Hang, Mimi G, 2021. Okay, so this next pair of pants, I actually just washed them so they are inside out, so I'm gonna flip them, flip them right side out, although I will show you, of course, I did my French seams, and I was so happy that I did the French seams, because I'm gonna tell you a little story about these britches and <laughs> just making it work when you really don't necessarily have a lot of options available. Basically, I wore these for traveling uh, on my plane ride back home. So it was a long day of travel and I don't know about you, it doesn't matter how early I start getting ready to fly somewhere, it always just feels hurried and rushed, but miraculously we had the car loaded, suitcases packed, everything squared away with the Airbnb that we had stayed at and I go to sit in the car and lo and behold, I hear the telltale crunch of threads breaking free from the garment. Oh my God. And that's exactly what happened right here on the back 
portion of these joggers, which I loved the pattern, by the way. I'll go ahead and share about that. <laughs> Thankfully, I also had a sweatshirt, zip up sweatshirt that I was able to wrap around my waist to cover up the fact that there was a uh, kind of gaping area right here. Again, I am so glad I did the French seams because it prevented it from being a wide open hole. Um, but this, it was very unusual. This is my first pair of pants that I have worn out. You know, I've sewn up my pajama shorts before. I haven't had an issue with them splitting. And so I don't know if the thread tension was too tight. I don't know if I should have used elastic thread to give a little bit more give, um, but that was my story. And so I just said, forget it. There's nothing I can do about it now. Everything's packed up, we're ready to go. We had to drive 45 minutes to get to the Santa Barbara airport and I could not be bothered <laughs> with, with switching it up. So my husband and I just laughed about it and kept it moving. But what I decided to do with this in the main modification. The pants here, the joggers, they require basically one, I think it's one and a half inch. Don't quote me on that. Maybe it's an inch. Let's see. Oh, one and one fourth inch elastic. I really wanted to create a different look. I like the look of having multiple elastic bands. This was quite an easy fix to do. Basically just sewed panels, I guess you could say, through here, looped a very skinny one fourth inch elastic band several different times, one, two, three, four, yeah, four different pieces of that elastic just to really give it that gathered look at the top that I love so much. And then just use the one fourth piece of elastic for the ankles strapped on a pair of white tennis shoes with this and I was good to go. I will say they were quite comfortable despite having the uh, loose threads in the, the first layer of that French seam coming totally undone. And I would highly recommend this particular pattern. It was McCall's M83, I'm getting tongue tied. McCall's M8351, super cute, very easy to sew. I also omitted the stripe down the side and just extended the pant leg. I didn't wanna add a stripe on these. I just wanted it to be one solid color. I have also made view A. It is bat wing, which I did not realize until after I had sewn it up. Still very cute, would highly recommend, but this is definitely the closest pattern I found to a really cute sweatsuit and uh, really enjoyed it. So I'll surely be using this again. I already have some other material that's a true sweatshirt material I will be using for this. But that's my story. The sewing journey continues. And I even remember thinking to myself, well, I'm gonna find out how well made these pants are by wearing them on an airplane all day long. And sure enough, right from the get go, 9 a.m., they had that telltale, just little, little creak of a noise and the threads busted open. So I've already fixed it at this point. I've had, you know, if you have any thoughts about that, I would love to hear. That's never happened to me, but again, I've never even worn a pair of pants, you know, so that I've sewn. So this was a new experience. All right, so the next top that I wanna show you is a McCall's vintage pattern. It's an unusual shirt. It's a little bit uh, odd, a little different. Uh, and it was complicated to sew to a certain degree. And I, I mainly say I'm hesitating even before I say that because it was the silky fabric. I have not sewn with silky material in a very long time. And it's been a nice treat not to, but of course I wanted to with this shirt. And you, you definitely feel the difference. It is a smidge more stressful to sew with silky material in my opinion, but overall I'm super happy with how it turned out. I actually did wear this on the trip. I wore it out to dinner on a little date night with my husband. And so it was this particular pattern here, McCall's M8257. This view, which is view A. 
Now it did call for a very wide piece of lace. I did not go for that. I, I tried multiple options and I don't know if it's because I've never worn a shirt like this, sewn a, a shirt like this, but it felt too much to add a, a long piece of lace there. So I omitted that and just added a very thin lace strap here uh, around the inner inner sleeves, which I think adds just a little something, nothing, nothing too major. Um, it is rated easy. I'm going to show you the pants next because I did sew these up. The pants were super easy. Highly recommend, especially if you're new to sewing pants. Now I did go ahead and use the same green material, which I really love the way it drapes. It is super cute and comfortable on. I did the same type of look with the top and just made all these different rows of elastic. This one has one, yeah, also four. I think this was even skinnier than the other pair of joggers, but I, I think with a wide leg pant that has so much fabric to it, it required also more than just a one and one fourth band of elastic, if that makes sense. The one and one fourth band of elastic, I originally did that, but it was just too delicate for some reason, in my opinion, for such a, a, a heavy pair of pants that had so much fabric. So it feels more um, weighty at the top to balance out the weightiness of the bottom. But everything has been done, all French seams, again, with this one. <laughs> Makes me laugh because I'm thinking about my sitting in the car and just hearing it break apart, the threads break apart. We'll see if that helps when I wear these little babies. But I also did even the French seams really with everything. Um, even with this top here, as you can see, and I'm so glad I did because I've already washed this, I think once or twice, and it really prevents any fabric fraying and just really protects all of those loose threads. So, okay, this was the pair of pants. If you recall, I got beautiful suede fabric. I'm gonna make bell bottoms, true bell bottoms out of the suede and not this heavier pant leg. Um, I think that material like this lends its hand better to the wide leg britches that you just pull on. So I'll keep you posted on when I make those bell bottoms. But this again was McCall's M8257, super cute retro vintage pattern. I would highly recommend it. The top was a little weird again, but the pants, major yes, loved them. If you love cute pajamas and loungewear, then this next pattern will be for you. This is McCall's M8392. It gives you the option to make pants, shorts, shirt, and robe. I made these two views right here, which is C and D. I omitted the ruffle from the bottom and from the top, although that would be super cute, but I was just looking to whip something up really quickly. Granted, this is an older make that I have not gotten around to showing, but it's just a very cute, simple PJ top and very cute, simple pajama shorts. Nothing to it. Um, this probably took maybe an hour to sew up both pieces. The most difficult part, if I'm being honest, that's really super beginner friendly. It's really not that difficult. Let me see if I can find it here. Oh yeah, just sewing darts in the top. That's it. But this was very easy to throw together. I've also made a top out of this fabric, but it is the perfect uh, fabric for loungewear. Super lightweight, got it on sale at Jillian Fabrics. I would highly recommend this pattern though. Even with the holiday season coming up, how cute would it be to whip up matching jammies for you and your family member or loved one or best friend. Very easy to sew up and really turned out super cute. Again, this is McCall's 8392. Very, very cute, highly recommend. Last but not least, let me go ahead and show you 
my very easy Vogue pattern that I had sewn up a couple weeks ago. This is V9344. I went with this view, view B, right here. I made some minor adjustments. I did, instead of a round neck, I did a square, square neck because that's my go-to, it's my favorite. It's such a modern twist on some patterns. And I sewed it up using my $3 piece of fabric from Goodwill, all right? And so here we have it. I love it. I could not be happier with how this dress turned out. It's got the puff sleeves here. Um, I shortened it so it's a, in between a mini, mini skirt and a regular mini skirt to add some visual interest. I added a hot pink zip down the back. This was truly a mock-up of this particular pattern and I am so happy with how it turned out. I will find a reason to wear this. I think it could be a great birthday dinner dress. I am not quite sure yet, but I am going to wear it. When it came to the sleeves, I omitted the cuffs that go around there. I tried several different things. I did try to add the cuffs on top. It did not look right. Um, I also wanted it to be tighter around my sleeve. And so I just I just decided to leave the elastic and especially with the mock-up version, it worked out great. But this was the cutest, most fun dress to sew. It really wasn't super complicated at all. So when they say very easy Vogue, I would have to agree. I just did bias tape on the inside, which I do think it called for. It's been a while again since I've sewn this up. But the bias tape for me was just the easier option instead of sewing in a facing or anything like that. And then it's um, it's Empire Waist, A-line. The material is so funny, but it's that satiny kind of material. <laughs> $3, I believe, at my local Goodwill. You just, again, you can't beat that. And what a fun thing to work with and try as an experiment that it was a happy experiment and turned out great. Okay, I said last but not least with that blue dress, but this really is the last but not least item. I found a style arc pattern. I'll get you those numbers and put it up here on the screen. But this was um, for a pair of cigarette pants. You know, the 1960s kind of straight down pants. I really was hunting around for a pattern. This was an interesting sew up makes kind of experiment for myself this time in that I really did a lot of mock-ups with material I had found at my local Goodwill because it was my first time sewing a lot of pairs of pants and I wanted to make sure that they came out the way I wanted them to and just to kind of get the overall feel. So I'm so glad that I used this material. There is some strange puckering right here with the darts. Um, next time I'm not going to backstitch these darts. I kind of got a little bit lazy and went ahead and, and said, forget it. I'll just backstitch. But there was a great trick I learned from watching someone else's YouTube videos. I wish I could remember who it was. She's a well-known seamstress. She has a huge following. I'll try and look her up and also put her video or at least her name to give her some credit on the screen. But she basically talked about how, maybe it was Professor Pincushion, I believe, where instead of backstitching the point at the dart here, you can leave the loose ends and tie them, and it prevents that puckering. I have done that before, and it has worked. So that is just something, an option, but I'm just pointing out my own mistakes because I am perfectionist in recovery constantly and that is something that stands out to me. There is a side zip here and I did not have a brown zipper so I just used a black zipper again letting go perfectionism over here. I would highly recommend this pattern though. It honestly was very straightforward. It was simple. Um, there are a couple tweaks I would make to this. The crotch is a little bit low okay Truly, I learned what I should do differently next time, and that's to sew the waistband down more, 
I, it really needs to have about a good inch removed there because these are kind of high water like on me. I will still be wearing them. They could be so cute with mules or heels, a white button down shirt, you know, one of the oversized button down tops. You, you can't go wrong with a pair of cigarette pants. Um, and I, I actually ended up really liking this material. Again, I think this was $5. I still have probably two and a half yards of it left over. I mean, huge quantity that I purchased from my local Goodwill. And as always, French seams throughout, which will hopefully assist in keeping any loose threads at bay. But I overall would highly recommend this pattern. Really wasn't much to it. It's paper when you receive it and you can trim your size and get to going. Sizing was straightforward. Overall, really enjoyed the style art pattern. The directions are not super clear. That was the one thing I remember about it. So if you're new, you may have to kind of YouTube how to sew a pair of pants just to get that visual image. That's always helpful for me. So I put that out there, but yes, give it a try, enjoy. So there you have it. Those are my most recent makes. Thank you so much for watching and sticking around. With life being so busy and this impending move coming up, I don't know how consistent I'm going to be able to be in terms of weekly videos, but I do not plan to leave my YouTube channel. I will definitely still be here just waiting for life to kind of even out and get this move out of the way before I get back on my consistent schedule. So how has your sewing been? Have there been any fun projects that you've recently completed? If so, I would love to hear about it in the comments. Thank you as always for being here, for watching and happy, happy creating to you.